accidentally sent a sales offer to a current client, spent hours crafting the perfect email just for your list to bounce. These are just a few of the marketing sins our clients have committed before they learned how to properly manage and segment their database. When HubSpot doesn't work how you need it to, it's frustrating, but it doesn't have to be that way. And by the end of this video, that'll be a thing of the past. Welcome to the third chapter of Marketing Hub Masterclass. And today we're diving into all things contacts and data management. This might not be the sexiest of topics, but it is the backbone for your marketing success. In this video, we'll cover why your CRM is truly the heart of your marketing engine, the smart way to import and manage your contacts, the crucial difference between marketing and non-marketing contacts, how to use contact properties, best practices for list segmentation to transform your email campaigns, and make sure to watch until the end for a very simple trick that could cut down on your HubSpot subscription costs. With that, let's jump in. Think of the CRM as the foundation of your HubSpot account. It's the base that all of your data across marketing, sales, service, and even your website are built on. So when your contact, company, and other key object data isn't logged or tracked correctly, this leads to massive downstream implications warping the data integrity of your entire database. But on the flip side, companies with a standardized data collection and input process absolutely thrive with HubSpot. When marketing, sales, and service are all aligned, you get a 360 degree view of each prospect and customer, creating a seamless experience from your very first touch point. Now that we understand the why behind good database management, let's walk through how to add contacts and the crucial difference between marketing and non-marketing contacts. So there are several ways to add contacts to your CRM manual creation, importing larger databases from a CSV file, using forms and integrations with other tools. We've covered each method of these in detail in our previous videos. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, make sure to check out our HubSpot contact management for beginners playlist. Now here's something a lot of teams get wrong. And I can't tell you how many times people have asked me, Gabrielle, what is the difference between marketing and non-marketing contacts in HubSpot? So here it is. A marketing contact is a contact who actively engages you via the marketing hub tools, such as a marketing email or an ad. And these contacts count towards your marketing contact limit within your HubSpot subscription. On the other hand, there is no limit to how many non-marketing contacts you can have. These are contacts that remain in your database, but you're not using any marketing tools to reach them. So for example, a non-marketing contact can be enrolled into an email sequences because sequences are part of the sales hub, but they can't be sent a marketing email because a marketing email is part of the marketing hub. And here's the money saving tip that we promised you guys. Regularly audit your contacts and mark any unengaged, unsubscribed and bounce emails as a non-marketing contacts so you never have to pay for them. And here's how you can change the marketing contact status. So first up is via the form settings. When someone fills out a form, you can automatically set a marketing or non-marketing status. Next, during an import. When you upload a file of contacts, you can choose to make them all marketing contacts or just have a column in your spreadsheet marking the contact type. Third, use a workflow. So you can set up automated rules to change a contact's marketing status based on certain actions. So for example, if someone bounces, trigger a workflow to automatically set them as non-marketing. Lastly, is a manual update. You can update a contact's marketing status one by one on the record or as many as you want from a list. Next, we're diving into contact properties. And properties are like individual details about each person in your database. So HubSpot comes with default properties like email, name, company, and phone. 
There are also dynamic properties that update automatically as contacts interact with your business. So some examples of these are lifecycle stage, email engagement metrics, or website visit history. But make sure to get this history. It is important that you have your tracking code installed. So if you want a step-by-step -step on that, make sure to watch the last chapter of our masterclass for those instructions. And lastly, if you want to collect data outside of HubSpot's default properties, you can use a custom property. Now, when creating a custom property, you will need to define these things. First, the property label. This is the name you'll be able to see in your CRM and how it appears on forms. Next is the internal name. So this is a permanent behind the scenes indicator of what the property is created for. And you can't change it once it's set. So even if you rename the property label, the internal name stays the same. So just make sure you get it right the first time. Next is the field type. This tells HubSpot what kind of information you'll be saving in the property. It could be a number, date, single or multi-line text, drop down selects or something else. Finally, rules and access management. So you can set rules and control who can see and change contact details. This keeps important information safe and organized, especially when your whole team is using HubSpot. And a quick pro tip here, when naming your custom properties, use a consistent naming convention to make them easy to find. Something like the department property name works really well. So for example, you can do marketing dash favorite product category. So how do you go from spray and pray marketing to sending the right message to the right person at exactly the right time? That is where HubSpot's powerful list segmentation comes into play. So guys, within HubSpot, there are two types of lists, active and static lists. Active lists are dynamic. As contacts meet or no longer meet your criteria, they're automatically added or removed from the list in real time. So for example, an active list could be contacts who visited our pricing page in the last seven days or leads with a lead score above 50. Static lists, on the other hand, capture a fixed set of contacts at the moment you created that list. The list will stay the same unless you manually add or remove contacts. And the real power comes from how you define your segments. So HubSpot lets you filter based on a lot of things like contact or company information, past activities and behaviors, email engagement, website visits, form submissions, and much, much more. You can even combine these filters using and or logic to create precisely targeted segments, such as contacts with CEO as their job title, who visited our pricing page in the last seven days. Once created, these segmented lists become the foundation for everything from your email campaigns to workflows to ad audiences and personalized website content. Now, this is a traditional way, but now we're in the AI era. So instead of having to manually build your list, you can simply describe the contacts you want using a prompt and HubSpot's list assistant will be able to handle all the filtering for you. So guys, there you have it, the Marketing Hub database management in a nutshell. And before moving on, remember these next steps. First, audit your current database and set inactive, bounced, or unsubscribed contacts to non-marketing. Then review your properties and add custom ones that matter for your business. Create at least one active list you can use for future campaigns. And finally, set up regular data cleaning schedules. And in the next Marketing Hub Masterclass video, we'll cover what the core inbound tools are to attract and convert your leads. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And don't forget to check out our blogs linked in the description for all the step-by-steps of everything we've covered today. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.